into the water for the final time. He's won the race to go along with the championship. Absolutely magnificent. What a strike that is. The following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. A lot of memories of Joe Caldina's heroics will be bubbling away in the minds and the hearts of Welsh fight fans today because we are just over 24 hours away from fight night in Cardiff. Can Caldina repeat the brilliance he showed against Kenichi Agawa or will Shavkat Rakimov prove too much in the quest to retain his title? IBF Super Featherweight crowd on the line in our main event in Cardiff tomorrow night ahead of a huge weekend of boxing live on the zone. Welcome everybody, Chris Lloyd here with Darren Barker. We've got some fighters to weigh in this afternoon, 20 yeah. of them in fact. Um, outside of the main event, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, which are you looking forward to the most? Uh, for me, it's easy. I think that's Gwyn Woodruff. I think the first fight, I enjoyed it. It was good. Two local lads, both with, you know, dreams to, to be the champion, be the, the, the guy that has the bragging rights in their home city so yeah for me that that will catch fire early doors yeah all welsh class for the uh, the british lightweight title on the line uh, at, on a big stage uh, of course and i think a worthy rematch between the pair of them as well um sandy ryan against marie pierre all from canada both uh, in their first ever Good world fight. title fight at 147 pound the vacant wbo title um how do you see that one panning out sandy ryan showed us a lot last year didn't she yeah i mean look she exercised some demons uh, revenging that loss to farias uh, a very good fight i think her last performance was fantastic i think it, it, she boxed so so well it was a mature performance. Earl can really fight. She's a very good fighter. She's dangerous. She likes to force the action. She likes to be on the front foot. So for me, I just think they're going to clash in the center of the ring and it's going to be fireworks. Zelfa Barrett back in action after a valiant yep. performance against Shavkat Rakimov out in Abu Dhabi. Um, laid out a bit of a blueprint for, for Joe Cordina. And if things go right for the Welsh Wizard uh, tomorrow night, he might have a, a bit to thank to, for Zelfa yeah. Barrett. I mean, we've heard it a few times this week. You know, blueprint. The blueprint has kind of been printed for for Joe Cordina, if you like. Zelfa boxed really, really well. There was a lot more he could have done. We touched on this yesterday, a lot yeah. circling in the ring. But for me, th there seems to be an aura confidence from Zelfa Barrett. Like, I've already beaten a former world champion, Kiko Martinez, you know, very close. Uh, could have gone either way. And I've put in a very good display against the current IBF world champion. I'm ready to go now. I'm in my prime, physically, mentally. He's got the experience. Everything's there. And I think he's desperate to do a job on Sanchez, who, by the way, is a very good opponent. But one eye at the potential fight of the winner of that fight, hoping it will be Joe Cordina. And opening the show, Jordan Thompson returns to, to action, almost completely shut out. A very good fighter in Vassal Dutzar yeah. um, last time out, but had a, an unbelievably weird last 30 seconds where he got clipped, buzz, unraveled, hit the deck, made the, the final bell by the skin of his seat and had his hand raised in victory. But I think it, it forced him to assess the, the setup he had. I think he was relying a lot on natural athletic ability and talent. And he made the switch to your old trainer, Tony yeah. Sims. And well, only been about three or four months with him, but he says he's learned an awful lot already. Well, look, there's a, there's a lot to, to learn. Even when you're in your, you know, your more experienced days as a fighter, and I think Tony will help Jordan. There's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of natural talent. He's fit. He's, you know, he's got that punching power. There was a lot of boxes ticked. I felt in that uh, Dukar fight. Um, I just feel now it's about showing the improvements he's made with Tony and really pushing on. 
He's in against uh, the former uh, Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion, the current English champion, Luke Watkins, a cruiserweight. That will open the show at 7 o'clock. We've got a whole series of fights on before the bell. Sky Nicholson uh, and a trio of Welsh fighters as well. It all starts at uh, 4.15 live on our YouTube channel. Dan Darren will be joined uh, by Sonny Edwards for that one. Uh, and all the fighters are ready to weigh in. So without further ado, let's hand over to our master of ceremonies for the afternoon. Here's David Diamante. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Cardiff, Wales for the official weigh-in for our huge night of World Championship professional boxing taking place here on Saturday night. I appreciate everyone for coming out. Now, the night is being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. All the action will go out live around the world exclusively on the zone, and we're sponsored by Betfred Stage Front and JD Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fight card we have. It's a world championship doubleheader. There are five title fights on the card, two world title fights, and at the top of the bill, the Welsh wizard, Joe Cordina, back in action. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the weigh-in. We'll bring the fighters up to the stage so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first contest, four rounds in the heavyweight division. Our first fighter makes his way from Swindon. He's a 48 fight veteran. Please welcome Phil Williams. Williams. And his opponent now making his way to the stage, his young professional record thus far perfect, three fights, three victories, fighting out of Newport, Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Miles, Flash Gordon Darby. Flash Gordon Darby. Now to the scale, Phil Williams. Two sixty two bang on two hundred and sixty two pounds for Big Phil Williams. And out of the scale, the undefeated man from Newport, Miles Flash Gordon Darby. Two hundred and forty point two from Miles Flash Gordon Darby. Miles Flash Gordon Darby. Miles Gordon Darby, the uh, the sole London representative on the card, opens the uh, proceedings on before the bell. About four fifteen, the ring walk in tomorrow night in against Big Phil Williams who uh, I think you remember was in with Fabio Wardley in the early stages of his career. Decent mover Gordon Darby 3-0 for, for a big man quite light on his feet. Yeah he is uh, I've seen some of his uh, unlicensed fights yeah. um, he's entertaining, comes to fight nice and rangy looks to fire in that right hand looks like he can punch Miles Flash Gordon Darby, Phil Williams four rounds heavyweights, matchroom boxing live on the zone from Wales United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, the way it continues, our next contest, six rounds in the light heavyweight division. Now making his way to the stage, his professional record, six wins against five defeats, five of his wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Leopaya, Latvia. Please welcome Juris Zondovskis. Zondovskis. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His young professional record is perfect. One fight, one victory. He's a southpaw fighting out of Swansea. Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Lee. Lee. Now to the scale, Juris Zondowskis. One hundred and seventy-nine and five ounces for Juris Zondowskis. One seventy-nine point five. 
And now to the scale, the undefeated Sammy Lee. One ninety three, bang on for Sammy Lee, one hundred and ninety three pounds. I've got to say, I'm a little bit surprised, Darren. I think they'd agree this one at one eighty three. Sammy Lee's coming there at one ninety three. Um, he had three years out of the ring at the end of his amateur career before his pro debut at the end of last year, and he was 191. I thought maybe we might see him creep down a little bit further towards what could be 175 or even 168, quite yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and that would be a more natural weight. Look, he's, he is carrying a bit there, you can see it. I'm not sure how preparation's gone, but there is some weight to lose there. Very talented fighter, Sammy won the Lee, Commonwealth Games Uras, and the senior games. Six rounds later, so anyways, a lot of talent to work with. Live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. So a little uh, heavyweight four-rounder to kick us off, followed by a uh, six-rounder at, well, cruiserweight as it uh, as it currently stands. Sammy Lee and Yuri Sandovskis from Latvia, six and five. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, next contest, four rounds in the super featherweight division. Our first fighter making his way to the stage. He's a southpaw. He's a 14-fight veteran fighting out of Oldbury. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jaffius Foray. Foray. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He is undefeated in this campaign as a professional with a record of five wins, no defeats, one draw. Fighting out of Newport, Wales. Please welcome Nathan Howells. Howells. Now to the scale, Jaffe is foring. One hundred and thirty pounds bang on the super featherweight limit for Jaffe is foring. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Nathan Howells. One hundred and thirty two pounds bang on for Nathan Howells. one thirty two even. Nathan Howells, Jaffius Foray, four round super featherweights, matchroom boxing, live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Jaffius yeah, Foray, uh, always in good condition. Saw him last time out against Adam Reichard up in uh, Newcastle. And well, we'll talk about the, the importance, Darren, of the win of Joe Caldina last year and of course the, the, the platform that these young fighters get to, to box on the likes of Sammy Lee and Nathan Owls and, and Brandon Scott to showcase their talents on a big stage. Oh, I mean it's massive, it's huge and, it, and it's so exciting for those young fighters. It gives them a taste of where they want to be. Okay, uh, ready to weigh in now. Brandon Scott, what has he got in store for us? Had you, uh, hand you back to David. Ladies and gentlemen, next contest, four rounds in the super featherweight division. First making his way to the stage, he's a 99-fight veteran presentando de la capital, Managua, Nicaragua. Damas y caballeros, Reynaldo Flaco Cajina. Cajina. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His record is perfect stuff thus far. Four fights, four victories, one of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Swansea, Wales, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Boom Boom Scott. Now to the scale, Reynaldo Caina. One hundred and thirty three and eleven ounces for Kahina.
And now to the scale, the undefeated Brandon Boom Boom Scott. Scott, 129 pounds. Brandon Boom Boom Scott, Reynaldo Cajina, four round super featherweights, matchroom boxing live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Good job he made the weight. Sometimes you hear about fighters having to take their pants off. I've never heard about one having to take the cape off before. <laughs> that was nice. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, he's a great character, Brandon Scott. He really is. spoke so well. Uh, the, the press here yesterday. Uh, he can back it up. He can fight Chris. Yeah, okay, looking forward to that. And uh, there's Super Joe Calzaghi, most famous champion in Welsh boxing history. 11 year reign from 1997, same year as Barry Jones won it. He'll be joining us on the broadcast tomorrow night as well. A huge night of Welsh heritage and pride, and lots of people with their fingers crossed for Joe Cordina. Uh, but next up, Sky Nicholson back in action for a seventh time against Linda Lecker from Lima in Peru. Both fighters ready to weigh in, so let's head back to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, eight rounds in the featherweight division. And first, making her way to the stage, her professional record, 15 wins, six defeats, two draws with three wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Lima, Peru. Here is the former WBA super flyweight champion of the world, Linda, la princesa Inca Leca. Leca. And her opponent now making her way to the stage. She's a southpaw with a perfect professional record. Six fights, six victories. Fighting out of Queensland, Australia, here is the 2020 Olympian, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and the reigning and undefeated Commonwealth featherweight champion, Sky Nicholson. Nicholson. Now to the scale, La Princesa Inca, Linda Leca. One twenty five point three for Linda Lecca. One twenty five point three. And now to the scale, the undefeated Sky Nicholson. One hundred and twenty seven pounds, fifteen ounces for the undefeated Sky Nicholson. One twenty seven point one five. Darren, we're just saying that if Sky Nicholson is uh, true to her words, she said yesterday that she might try and show a little bit more of what she's been working on inside. And, and I think that's part of the, her game that obviously needs the most development. The outside game is she's going to be very hard to beat there. Well, exactly what I just said. She's there. She, she learns how to fight inside. She's a very, very accomplished fighter indeed. Uh, she's ticking a lot of boxes there. She's, you know, covering all bases, if you like. And yeah, I mean, as far as boxing abilities concerned, she's got it all. She's very, very, very good at her feet, quick hands. Boxing, live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Great ring IQ. But yeah, if she could do that little bit of fighting inside the pocket, she, she'd be a very, very hard lady to beat. I think hard to imagine she'll put a dent in Linda Lecker if Raven Chapman couldn't because we know she can really really punch um, but uh, really good fight to cap things off over eight rounds our final contest on before the bell so as I mentioned before those of you just joining us welcome we'll be kicking things off uh, around about 4.15 tomorrow afternoon uh, on YouTube Miles Gordon Darby and Phil Williams in a, a four rounder at heavyweight to start things off the brilliant Welsh 
amateur international Sammy Lee in his second pro contest against Yuri Sandovskis from Latvia. Then Nathan Howes, another Welsh fighter, in against Yafis Fore, Brandon Scott and Ronaldo Kahina. And then Sky Nicholson and Linda Lecker to end things on before the bell and kick us off a, a big weekend of boxing live on the zone and a big schedule over the next few weeks. Well, you can take your pick of what you like over the next few weeks on the zone. But remember, outside the action, there's plenty to look forward to. 250 classic fights in the archive. A new documentary on Ryan Garcia, Garcia Unwrapped. Make sure to check that out ahead of the big fight in Las Vegas tomorrow night as well. I'll tell you what, that's that's oh, something I'm so looking forward to. I mean, that's a mega fight. I think the biggest dilemma for us is can we possibly do the that, overnight? That is the issue. I go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. so. We shall see. Anyway, uh, ready to get the main card. Uh, Wade in underway, Jordan Thompson and Luke Watkins are backstage ready to hit the scales. So let's head back to David Diamante. From Cardiff, Wales, the way it continues as Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing is proud to present 10 rounds for the IBF European Cruiserweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, please welcome the challenger. His professional record, 16 wins against two defeats. He has 11 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Swindon. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former English and Commonwealth Cruiserweight Champion, Luke, the Duke Watkins. Watkins. And now making his way to the stage, please welcome the defending titleist. His professional record, a perfect one. 14 fights, 14 victories, 11 of his 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Manchester, England. He is the practitioner of artistic violence and the reigning, defending, undefeated IBF European Cruiserweight Champion, Jordan Troublesome Thompson. Thompson. Now to scale the challenger, Luke the Duke Watkins. One ninety eight bang on for Luke, the Duke Watkins, one hundred and ninety eight pounds. And now to the scale, the undefeated title is the practitioner of artistic violence, Jordan Troublesome Thompson. A trim and ready 199 pounds, bang on for the undefeated Mancunian, Jordan Troublesome Thompson.
Thompson, Luke Naduk Watkins, 10 rounds for the IBF European Cruiserweight Championship. Matchroom Boxing, live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Bit Luke Watkins would have taken a lot of confidence from that final round that Vassal Dusa had against Jordan Thompson, but maybe counting his chickens a little bit too early because Thompson, I think you, you know as well as I do, had a very different type of preparation for this fight. Well, look, there's two ways to look at this, as always. Um, Jordan Thompson will want to impress, so Watkins is going to have to be wary of that. He's going to try and let big shots go. I know he would have been working inside, etc. And Watkins, how does Watkins approach that fight? Does he try and get up close? I don't think at range he can win this fight. You look at the Dusar fight and think, well, he's got to try and rough Jordan Thompson up. I think there's, there's going to be some twists and turns in this fight. OK, well, two former world title challengers in our second contest over 12 rounds at the 130 pound weight limit. Zelfa Barrett and Jason Sanchez ready to weigh in, so let's head back to the stage. Mm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, 12 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Super Featherweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, his professional record, 16 wins against three defeats. He has nine wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, USA. He's the former WBO Youth Featherweight Champion and the former World Title Challenger. Please welcome Jason Alacrancito Sanchez. Sanchez. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record, 28 victories, only two defeats. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Manchester, England. He is the former IBF Intercontinental, Commonwealth, and European champion, and the former world title challenger, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. Barrett. Now to the scale, Alacrancito, Jason Sanchez. One twenty-eight and ten ounces for Jason Sanchez. One hundred twenty-eight pounds, ten ounces for Jason Sanchez. And out of the scale, the brown flash, Zelfa Barrett. One hundred and twenty nine pounds, one ounce for Zelfa Brown Flash Parrot. Zelfa Barrett, Jason Sanchez, 12 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Super Featherweight Championship. Matchroom Boxing, live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Zelfa Barrett looking uh, a little bit sunken around the eyes. They clearly, clearly having to work hard to make the weight. Jason Sanchez a little bit more luxury, of course, coming on uh, just a couple of weeks' notice, but hearing that he's been in the gym waiting for an opportunity. And of course, naturally, boxing a, a featherweight, but a featherweight who's boxed at world level could be a handful tomorrow. Yeah, well, I'm sure he will be. Sanchez can fight. He, he's not afraid to trade, and he will do that with Zelfa Barrett. Zelfa Barrett, though, one eye on something very, very big. If he can take care of Sanchez, that Cordina fight, if he comes through in the main event, is there for him. Joe Cordina's. Uh, family and friends in your shots there is uh, his young boy there and his mum as well they'll be cheering him on when he weighs in in three fights time but two welshmen looking to prove a point when they clash for the british lightweight title for a second time in the space of six months on the big stage gavin Gwynn, the champion craig rogers the challenger will do battle again in our third contest of the night and they are ready to weigh in okay ladies and gentlemen it's now time to weigh in the rematch as we go 12 rounds for the British Lightweight Championship. Now making his way to the stage, please welcome the challenger. His professional record, 12 victories, six defeats, one draw, with four wins coming by way of knockout. 
He fights set of all weight, Newport, Wales. Here is the former undisputed Welsh lightweight champion and the reigning Celtic lightweight champion, Craig Smiler Woodruff. Woodruff. And his opponent now making his way to the ring, to the stage. His professional record, 15 wins, two, draw, two defeats, one draw. He has three wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Tree Harris, Wales. Here's the former Commonwealth lightweight champion and the reigning and defending British lightweight champion, the Merthyr Mexican. Please welcome Gavin Gwynn. Gwynn. Now to the scale, the challenger, Craig Smiler Woodruff. One hundred and thirty three pounds, fifteen ounces for Craig Smiler Woodruff, one thirty three point one five. And now, the reigning British lightweight champion to the scale from Tree Harris, Gavin Gwynn. One thirty-four point two. One thirty-four point two for the reigning champion, Gavin Gwynn. Well, Gavin Gwynn looks in unbelievable shape coming in just a shade under the 135 pound limit. Craig Woodruff a little bit lighter. Complete contrast of styles, Darren, but they just gel so brilliantly. They, they, they do. The first fight was brilliant. We heard, obviously, Gavin Gwynn suffered a, a hand injury in the third round, but nonetheless, it was a brilliant fight. They, they, they've sparred with each other. They know each other really well. And I think that that makes this rematch a very, very interesting fight indeed. They both agreed to an immediate rematch. They knew how close it was first time around. And they get to do it on the big stage in front of a Wales crowd tomorrow night. Absolutely brilliant from the pair of them. And if the fight is anything like as good as the first, and can't see any way that they won't just pick up straight where they left off. We are in for such a treat for the British lightweight title live on the zone from Cardiff tomorrow night. Not of acknowledgement between them. They know it's going to be close. for the British lightweight championship, Gavin Gwynn, Craig Woodruff, matchroom boxing live on the zone from Cardiff, Wales. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to weigh in the chief support of the evening. As Mr. Eddie Hearn from Matchroom Boxing is proud to present 10 rounds for the vacant WBO welterweight championship of the world. And now making her way to the stage, she is undefeated in her campaign with a professional record of eight victories, no defeats, one draw, with two wins coming by way of knockout. El Sabat de Terrebonne, Quebec, Canada. Madame et Monsieur, soyez les bienvenus. M.P.H. Marie-Pierre Oul. Oul. And her opponent now making her way to the stage. Her professional record, five victories, one defeat. She has two wins coming by way of knockout. She fights out of Derby. Here is the reigning WBC International Super Lightweight Champion, Saturday night, making her first attempt at a world title, Sandy Medieval Ryan. 
Ryan. Now to the scare, Marie Pierre Oul. One hundred forty five pounds, nine ounces for MPH Marie Pierre Oul. And now to the scale, Sandy Medieval Ryan. One forty six point six for Sandy Medieval Ryan. One forty six point six. Yeah, Marie Pierre Ull, Darren looks physically very, very strong, used to fighting at this weight. Sandy Ryan, of course, was at the 140 pound limit for those three fights last year. It started in disaster for her, but then avenged that defeat to two weight world champion Erica Farias before outclassing a three weight world champion in an IES to Sanchez. Ull has never boxed 10 rounds before, and that lack of experience and the 30 rounds that Ryan got could end up being a difference tomorrow. Mark my words, this will be fireworks yep. for 10 too many rounds. I have no doubt about it. Stylistically, Sandy it will gel. Ryan, I am certain about that. Yeah, I think if Mary Pierre always hoping for a smile from Sandy Ryan, then she hasn't been following the journey so far. There'd be no love lost at all until after the contest. Ten rounds for the vacant WBO welterweight world title. And if what we're hearing is correct, then an agreement with Jess McCaskill is in place to fight for the undisputed titles in the summer. McCaskill, of course, has got to deal with Ivana Habazin before that. And... From, uh, from my information, the IBF felt lays vacant. Will they put that one on the line if those two do battle? But there's lots to attend to before we even have to, to talk about that yet. And Sandy Ryan knows she's got to get business done. Looking well, isn't he, Super Joe? Oh, he looks very well. He's been training. He's been fasting. I, I dare say the question, would it be a comeback? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's no stranger to the big nights, and we've got one for you tomorrow night, and we are ready for our main event weigh-in. Shavkat Rakimov, the new champion of the belt that Joe Cordina was stripped of outside of the ring after that brilliant moment against Kenichi Agawa. Can he recreate some magic in Cardiff tomorrow night? Both fighters are ready to weigh in for our main event. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome everybody here today to Cardiff, Wales, and it's now time to weigh in the main event of the evening as Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing and Titoff Boxing Promotions are proud to present 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Now making his way to the stage, please welcome the challenger. His professional record, a perfect one. 15 fights, 15 victories, nine of them coming by way of knockout. He is the former British lightweight champion, the former Commonwealth lightweight champion, the 2016 Olympian, and the former undefeated and former IBF junior lightweight champion of the world, the Welsh wizard, Joe. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He is the defending world champion. He's a Southpaw who is also undefeated in his campaign as a professional with a record of 17 wins, no defeats, one draw with 14 of his 17 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Kurgantu Ben, Tajikistan. Here is the former IBO super featherweight world champion and the reigning defending an undefeated IBF junior lightweight 
champion of the world, Shavkat Sherhan Rahimov. Rahimov. Now to the scale, the undefeated Welsh wizard, Joe Cordina. One twenty nine point one two for Joe Cordina, one twenty nine point one two for the Welsh Wizard. And now to the scale. The reigning, defending, undefeated IBF Junior lightweight champion of the world, Shavkat Shehan Rahimov. One twenty-nine point seven for the defending world champion, Shavkat Shehan Rahimov. You can see from the faces they both had to work hard to make this weight. Joe Cordina rehydrating, Rakimov doing the same thing. A bit of vulnerability around the body for Rakimov. Last time against South America, complained a couple of times to the referee that shots yeah. were low when they weren't. Joe Cordina may sense a little bit of weakness there. And he would have seen that last fight up close, ringside in Abu Dhabi. He'll know the strengths and the weaknesses of the man in front of him. Yeah, absolutely. When you're tight on the weight, you are vulnerable around the body. And we did see that against... Barrett for sure from Rakimov. So Cordina doesn't look like he's got a lot of room to spare either. No, no. Um, one one twenty nine point one, but clearly he's had to to go some to make the weight. And there is the champion Shavkat Rakimov, a Freddie won't strain Southport as formidable as you would expect offensively, but he has got his vulnerabilities. Can that man expose them tomorrow night? Look at the stare between the two. So much on the line. Wow. Both extremely confident. Wow. I mean, if this don't get the juices flowing for tomorrow evening, I don't know what does. Fantastic. Well, he's boxed all over the world. Rakimov won the title out in Abu Dhabi. Box stateside to the partisan crowd tomorrow night. Won't phase him one bit, but he will be met with a wall of noise, unlike anything he's experienced so far. And he will bring the heat to Joe Cordina. And he looks ready, the world's wizard. Well, a stare down to go. That was absolutely uh -huh. superb, Darren. I think we're going to grab a uh, quick word with Joe Kazagi in a couple of moments' time. He was he was right there. It's always good to get the insight of people who are who are there. But um, goodness me, I mean that was that was really really tense. Well, do you know what I love about it? That's why I'm buzzing off of that. Is because you don't need no pushing, no shoving, nothing like that. You can just see in both fighters' eyes that they mean business. They are ready for war tomorrow night. Known Joe for, for a number of years through through the amateurs. Never really ever seen him lose his cool, seen him angry. The only time really was in Abu Dhabi last year. And I think the frustration of all the hard work, all the years of, of graft and sacrifice to have had the belt he won taken away from him so quickly, he really was fired up. That would have added some fuel to his training camp, won't it? I think so. But I think as time's gone on, he's sort of settled down. And now he realises there's a, you know, a kind of a different path for him. The stars have aligned in a sense where now he has the opportunity to be a two-time world champion. Taking on the, the fluids, getting hydrated. Ring walks for this scheduled at around quarter to 11 local time in Wales tomorrow night. And well... As they came face to face, we know Eddie Hearns down at a, a charity lunch in London, but Joe Calzaghi was right next to those guys. I mean, that's as intense a face-off as you're going to see, isn't it, Joe? 
That was a great face-off. You know, Rakamov looks up for it. Uh, so does uh, Joey Cordina. It's going to be a great fight. Two undefeated fighters, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great night. When you go into a fight against someone you know is formidable, you know is a pressure fighter, like you did against Jeff Lacey, how important is it Cordina doesn't give up ground too early, creates angles well, and stays as close to the centre of the ring as he can? It's massively important. At the end of the day, he's got all the boxing skills. I think he's got the boxing IQ to uh, do a good job in this fight. I saw Rakamov fight uh, in his last fight, and he got dropped. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think um, he's not the uh, predictable southpaw. I think that the skills with Joey Cordina, I think he's got to use his boxing skills, not carried away. He's been inactive 10 months. He's got the home cr the crowd behind him. Just keep his feet, keep that distance, the timing, and use boxing skills. I think he'll, after six, seven rounds, I think he'll take over the fight. Uh, how important do you think the crowd could be in that fight, or will be in that fight? I think the crowd's massive, because I, I know what it's like to have tough fights. You know, I had some big, big, tough fights, especially at the motor point. You know, uh, Charles Brewer was one of them, you know, Byron Mitchell. And when, when you've got that crowd, the intense crowd, and trust me, Rock and Mo, he's going to feel that pressure. And I believe that, like Joey Cody, it's his time. Uh, he's looking for big fights, big unification fights after this fight. But first things first, you know, he's against a tough challenger. I mean, the tough champion, sorry, I forgot he got stripped of the title. <laughs> Let's get it the right way around. So, yeah, it's going to be a good fight. And I, I, I think Joey's going to win his style. Darren, uh, when you've got a sharp shooter with great balance and, and long shot selection like Cordina, sometimes people underestimate the, the dog in them and how, yeah. how good they can be inside and how much heart they can show. We didn't get to see that against the guy. The sense is that maybe we might see that against Rakimov yeah. tomorrow. I, I'm not sure if you'd have felt the same, but I, you know, where I was a nice, tidy boxer, it used to wind me up when people used to say, oh, he, he, he can't fight, he can't get stuck in. Do you know what I mean? He hasn't got that fire, that will to win. But... I did, you did, and, and I know Joe does. And just quickly, I think on Joe, if he was to pick an opponent or a style of an opponent to yeah, fight, yeah. I think he would choose someone like a Rackamon, yeah, someone true. that comes forward. Yeah. When you've got that skill, that speed, that footwork, I think you want someone who, who you don't have to go looking for. He's going to be yeah. there to be here. And I think he's just... Look, I just think stylistically, this is all right yeah, for Joe. I, th I think I agree. Style make fights. I think uh, the last opponent is probably tougher than this guy. Although he caught him in the second round. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to knock him out in two rounds, but what I'm saying is I think the styles make fights. The guy's not that fast on his feet. Joe can do what he wants to do in this fight. I think he uses boxing skills and can dictate the pace of the fight. Can we have another Super Joe uh, in Cardiff tonight? Look forward to sharing the night with you tomorrow, chaps. Joe, thank you thank for joining you. us Thanks as well. well. Uh, thank you for joining us here um, at the way in this afternoon. A massive night of boxing coming up in Cardiff tomorrow night on the zone ahead of a huge weekend of boxing around the world because afterwards we will head to Sin City. Mm. It is go time. Doesn't get much bigger than this. Just turning up the heat. Levy on Bell! Just listen to this noise. Oh! Brilliant right hand. Absolutely magnificent. This is where the competition really comes to life. Brilliant, absolutely superb.